Derek Carr trade destinations. Could he go somewhere? Yes. Will he go somewhere? Yes. They've already gave him permission to talk with other teams. Now, one of the interesting ones here, of course, I'll throw the Jets out there. Of course, everything I just mentioned, we know the defense. We know, uh, you know, uh, again, because um, I know this is going to be a separate clip. Elijah Vera Tucker, obviously, Elijah Moore, Brees Hall, uh, Garrett Wilson, Sauce Gardner, Quinnen Williams. Uh, the defense is elite. You know, the culture feels like it's turning around. Robert Sala has come in as a coach and just provided a great spark and energy for these guys. So we know that the Jets would be a good landing spot for Derek Carr. I thought the Bucks was an interesting one as well. You have a weak division. The Saints are confused. The Falcons and the Panthers are going to be the Falcons and the Panthers. Panthers, excuse me. We know who they are. Um, you know, the Bucs have won the division two seasons in a row. They've got Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. So it feels like it wouldn't be a major drop off from a Devonte Adams and a Darren Waller. It would be a reduction, but not intensely because we know the duo of Chris Godwin and Mike Evans as well. And this could show the people that he can win and win some playoff games. The division's weak enough. You get in there, maybe win. Mm, I don't know. Let's just say, let's just say 10 games, you know? Maybe get him a little more money in the bank. Maybe get him a you know another bridge quarterback job. Maybe get him a, a final landing spot to finish out the last you know four to six years of his career. Maybe that could be in Tampa. Maybe we see it. I don't know. <clears throat> we have another one in the Washington Commanders, and you look at the fact that because they were eight eight and one, they did leave now with the number sixteen overall pick, but they should have a decent amount of salary cap space to upgrade under center this year and not only to be able to upgrade under center because of course when you trade the player you trade the contract as well Derek Carr does have a no trade clause also he's getting paid 40 large a year so it is going to be interesting with how these things can play out as well but with that um you know disposable income rather in that salary cap space they can bring in guys for Derek Carr with the Washington Commanders you got a top 10 defense and you got an offensive weapons like Terry McLaurin, Gary Terry, of course, John Dotson, Antonio Gibson, Brian Robinson Jr. And they could also compel Carr to actually restructure his deal in the event of a trade, of course, or offer him a discount in the event of a free agent deal. So there's a multiple couple or excuse me, there's a multitude of ways that the commanders could actually attack this for Derek Carr and make it a viable option for him to come over. Do I think it would be great? Uh, not, well, no, let me, I use the word great too much. Do I think it would be good? Yes. Derek Carr with the commanders would be good because he would have, <clears throat> he would have the defense. He would have the offensive weapons. Um, but again, the culture, the coaching, is it really much better than Las Vegas? We see how often the commanders actually get in the news before they change the names multiple times. People hate the owner. They think he should sell the allegations, you kind of have the same vibe in Las Vegas right now. So talent-wise and on the field, yes, but behind the scenes and for actually a an upgrade, like, of course, to your front office, and I, of course, I feel like it starts there, head coach, GM, quarterback, coach. Like, you got to have that continuity there. I don't know if once you get to that deep point that it's actually going to be that way. And then the best for last, maybe not in your opinion, Maybe it's not the best for last, but I am going to think that the New Orleans Saints have a trade, not a trade, that the New Orleans Saints have a case to actually go get Derek Carr. And reportedly, the Saints either have or they're willing to offer this year's third and fourth rounder for Derek Carr. Now, that wouldn't be horrible. That really wouldn't be horrible. Again, you trade for the player. You trade for the contract. I know he would have to get a restructure because we're about $60 million roughly over the cap. I think it's $58 million to be specific over the cap right now. But you look that the Saints either have or they're willing to offer a 2023 third and fourth rounder for Derek Carr. You've got an Alvin Kamara, who we talked about it earlier in the show. It's kind of on the downhill, um, but I think you get him back in the right system. I wish it was someone different than Dennis Allen and Pete Carmichael. Or you get him back with the right quarterback that can really use him properly. I think you're looking at a different version of Alvin Kamara. Chris Olave, who was snubbed from the Offensive Rookie of the Year, over 1,000 yards with the multiple quarterbacks he played with. You got Rashid Shahid, who the Saints signed as an undrafted rookie free agent and has actually been doing pretty well for the New Orleans Saints. The first two touches of the guy's career were touchdowns. You look at Jawan Johnson, who's actually taken a leap for the New Orleans Saints, and I'm very, very impressed by that. 
The defense clearly started to come around at the end of the year. Again, you heard it earlier in the show, outside of the run game, the Saints were top 10 in all defensive categories, which I really, really love to see as a fan because early on in the year, they were bad. They couldn't stop a nosebleed. Um, Marshawn Lattimore was out for two or three months this year. In the first game back, he has a pick six. So it took a minute for that defense to actually come around. But they've shown they can be great. They've shown they can support a nice linebacking core. They've got a Marshawn Lattimore. And again, they just got Todd Grantham in there so he could really, really coach up that defensive line. Because I think with Derek Carr, what you're actually, or what he's going to be looking for Derek Carr is really going to want that, okay, I need some weapons. I need a culture and a head coaching upgrade for sure, considering what's happened over the last couple of years with Vegas. And I need a defense because that has always kind of been a, a drawback of Derek Carr's career is he's never had that defense that can actually take some of that pressure off him and let them get to the bigger game.